Well, hello, Sunshine. Welcome back, everybody. Appreciate you being here. Daryl, uh, Johnson, appreciate you guys being in here all the time. John Deere guy, Kevin L., Archer, Farmless Farmer, all you guys is always commenting. I appreciate you. I really enjoy the comments and the banner. Keep it up. What we're up to on the next stage of this chainsaw build, one step at a time, dyno and every step along the way, is the exhaust. We've done a stock run on it, transfers on it, then we've done the intake, now we're going to up, get up and do the exhaust port. If you missed any of the other ones, curious to see them, they're in a playlist. These will all be in a separate playlist. Today's like January 27th. So these probably won't be out till second week of February. It takes me a while, guys. This is just my hobby here. Uh, so bear with me. I think the exhaust will really open this up. We're gonna raise it. all probably a degree or two. Move my RPM range back up just a little bit. Don't forget that we're gonna be doing more steps after the exhaust. We still got the muffler to do. We're gonna do a few iterations of that. We're gonna go back down to run ring. When I get the exhaust done, I think I'm also gonna incorporate when I start on the mufflers, I think I'm going to incorporate trying to see how much temperature we can drop this saw or how much it affects it that way. So, uh, same thing with one ring and versus two ring and things like that. I'm going to try to put a load on it for X amount of time and same on both ones, see how much temperature changes, things like that. So stick around for those. Those will be a while down the road. It takes me a while to edit and uh, get everything going. Without further ado, here we went. Well, I got sidetracked since yesterday, about 24 hours ago when I was sitting here getting ready to tear this saw down. Jeep quit me, found a misfire. Got some baby hogs, baby pigs. Got some new sheep, baby lambs last night. Uh, been busy, so let me get this cleaned off and we'll get back to having fun. Okay, there's the stock exhaust. Nothing modified to it yet. Now this is the roof of the exhaust here. I've took it up all oh, 30, 40,000, something like that. Now what I'm doing here is I'm widening this port out to match the gasket and thinning the gasket just a little but not much. And you can see that's, hopefully you can see, that's got a pretty sharp ramp there. Uh, that's, I haven't went inside yet very much. I want a straight lip from straight shot from this lip to where my thumbnails coming through now I'm not going to take that down any I just want to I just want that to be a nice straight cone now hopefully you can see that uh, that was ramped up into there hopefully you can see well we was working on the floor I'm sorry hopefully you can see right back in here there is just still a little bit of carbon because I didn't grind there. Uh, not much of a jump off, but I just wanted to demonstrate. I don't know that I'm right, uh, but that's pretty well flat edge now. All the way back in there. It was humped up. I couldn't lay my flat edge on there. So that's what we're shooting for, or that's what I'm shooting for anyhow. Now there's the basic shape of it. Uh, we haven't smoothed on anything yet with a sander or anything else. That's just my grinding. Uh, we'll see about getting that polished up just a little bit. I'm not going to polish it too much because it'll probably get changed again. But I'll bring you back and show you. Uh, basically, I just opened it up. And I probably didn't change the timing by a degree or so, which is fine. I widened it out just a little bit. I want to put it on the saw and check it. Okay, there's, there's the exhaust about ready to go on. I'm not going to do it any better than that, I don't think. Uh, it ain't terrible. It ain't great. Uh, it's, it's smooth enough. It's not going to carbon up in the short amount of time I'm going to run it before I tear it back down. I've also got the muffler opened up to match it. I'll bring it back when I get the saw together. straightened out. I can tell we've lowered the static compression by raising the roof. We've raised the exhaust roof uh, 
about two, three degrees. exhaust dyno numbers here we're up to 3.51 horsepower uh, which wasn't too big an increase over the last one 3.50 and let's face it I can be off that much just in dyno operator uh, weather corrections they'll move it a little bit uh, like I say it's just a tool uh, it's on the intake but we didn't gain much horsepower but let's go back to the beginning the new stock cylinder was 3.2 horsepower at 97.69 RPMs. Then we done the transfers that brought it up to 3.41. We done the lower transfers and just smoothed the uppers, didn't change blow down or anything. Uh, so we went up to 3.41, but look at the RPMs. We went from 97.69 down to 96.01, so 170. We lost 170 RPMs, basically in the cut, if you will. But we picked up some horsepower. Uh, then we done the intake. Now we done that uh, last week, last video. Uh, we picked up some more horsepower from 3.41 to three and a half flat out. But we dropped more RPMs. Uh, we're 93.81, so we keep moving down, which I expected. That's okay. We keep putting, we keep putting more, uh, more volume. And slowing that air down is actually what we're doing right now until we get to the exhaust. And we got to the exhaust today. Now, you'll notice we was at 3.50 at 93.81. Now, on the exhaust, we're only at 3.51, but we moved her up uh, better than 500, 500 RPMs, give or take. So we moved this power towards the high RPMs. Here we are on the high. I'm just backwards the other guy's graph. I can change it. I personally like it this way. If you guys don't, let me know. I can switch it back. Uh, I wrote this program so I can, I can do with it what I want. Uh, but here's where your saw is spun up, and I just read it left to right like you'd be reading a book, and it starts pulling down, starts adding torque. Uh, so anyhow, we move the peak torque up uh, to 9,823 RPM. So we're going in the right direction. It like that. Uh, so stock versus now. Uh, the the curve and the intake timing and I erased it the last iteration versus in uh, our RPMs were down we'd lost it on the top end we're gaining it back now and the blue lines after is the most current well of course it would be the red line stock so we're pretty similar in there uh, we was a little jumpy in there but the numbers are what they are I put them in uh, it could have could have hiccuped I don't know um, I don't lie to myself and I don't lie to you guys what comes out is what comes out uh, so now the previous iteration was the intake timing then we went to exhaust and you're gonna see those right there 
and actually they're pretty similar other than uh, the peak RPM or the peak horsepower and it was kind of broad on just the intake was uh, was right here at 9381 we moved it up just a hundredth basically immeasurable we'll say at 9823 uh, we moved up eight tenths of a foot pound of torque and we moved the torque actually down a little bit and that very possibly looks to me like it could be uh, clutch slipping which will increase your torque we were we were a little bit over but it started going up at about 5600 uh, and a and a slipping clutch can increase your torque because it's just like a gear reduction it's like downshifting the engine may make three rpms for every two rpms that the sprocket turns which is a gear reduction which is going to raise your torque it would lower your horsepower due to speed on the shaft but it would raise your torque so uh, that's kind of negligible too but it is what it is uh, you guys are getting the data as I got it I'm just sharing with you guys what I've done um, now I do want to take you back I had some questions here the other day uh, and and guys stick around we got some uh, the next things we got uh, we got transfer timing changing the blowdown um, on this exhaust I lowered that uh, about three degrees and it was I took off more than I intended to to be honest about it I misread the wheel uh, I didn't want it that low it is what it is uh, I plan I'll probably end up machining it and bringing it down just to correct those numbers uh, I'll probably take off the base and out of the combustion chamber uh, probably but anyhow regardless we have uh, transfer timing coming up change up blow down we're at about 27 28 degrees right now I want to lower that down to the mid 20s and try that uh, we got mufflers to do uh, and in mufflers and all that I'm starting to take uh, heat measurements I, I don't have any on this but I'm starting to take heat measurements uh, and I will uh, what I'll do is I'll set my dyno and I'll put it on a specific pull let's say uh, X amount of foot-pounds um, just below where peak horsepower was um, I'll pick me a number and it'll be the same on all of them and I'll run that for 30 seconds and I'll get a measurement on that head temperature once it stabilizes or if it does um, so we're working on that so stay tuned for that uh, and another reason we're doing that is because whenever I go to the single ring I want to see if we lose any heat with just miss losing that single ring they claim you will I want to see it and just because I don't see it I guess don't mean it don't happen but I'd like to try to see it another thing I'm doing is what it takes to roll that engine over without a spark plug in it uh, and I've got some numbers on that and that's going to translate uh, right now believe it or not calculating out at 13,000 rpms it takes 0 0.405 uh, horsepower to just turn the rolling assembly over in that engine with friction uh, due to parasitic losses so we're going to measure that too the best way I know how this isn't a lab this isn't finite it's just what I'm finding guys so uh, I did have a question on my uh, I did have a question on my uh, spreadsheet or not actually the spreadsheet they was watching my dyno and, and I'll put numbers up here uh, a lot of times when I'm dyno and I'll let you guys see what I'm seeing and the top one when you're watching that in the screen will be blue and the bottom one's red and they was watching the RPMs and it was saying something like 7,000 well the reason that is is now not everybody does this there's another dyno or two on and they're taking a torque measurement off their um, reduced side and putting a tack on the chainsaw uh, I was gonna say you can't do that you can do it I guess you can do whatever you want but you need to read uh, torque and rpms on the same shaft okay so what I've got is uh, I've got a seven seven drive on the chainsaw and a 20 drive driven sprocket that I built okay 
uh, now on my shaft I've got a Hall Effect sensor that's got two magnets on it. If I want to bring that down to one magnet I can change this in my spreadsheet and guys watch I don't know just pick out one here watch a line and I'll switch that down to one magnet and if that was still showing whatever RPM you picked out see it would be showing it would actually be the saw would be doing 19,000 RPMs if the shaft was turning that fast but the shafts not turning that fast I've got two magnets on it so the shaft at let's say 8,000 RPMs is actually only turning 4,000 RPMs so I've got the number doubled so it's a bigger sample size so theoretically twice as accurate um, so you're liable to see these numbers changing while they are directly correlated to the saw they're not always finite to what you're going to see see if I change that sprocket we're at 8901 and run 12, 7, 16. If I put, if that was running that same speed with an eight pin sprocket, we, the saw would actually be only running uh, 11,000, but we was on a seven. And we keep on going down. So these shaft factors here are just calculations for my, my uh, uh, stuff I put in up here, see. Uh, those calculations. I wrote this spreadsheet. Uh, the sh the shaft factors will change. Like if I put an eight pin sprocket on there, that automatically changed that shaft factor. Uh, that way, my spreadsheet can grab this number and that number depends on which one it needs. Um, what we have down here is a pump. Bar oh, well, let me back up. You're gonna go down here and you'll notice zero 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 because that was the end of my numbers and you're going to show them th showing 0.34 foot pounds of torque okay what that's doing is I've got I measure this every time what it takes to turn that shaft in that pump okay it ain't much it ain't much but I measure it it's 0 0.08 foot pounds of torque so all it is okay so it is now, here's the big factor. Uh, chain tension or chain torque, and I measure that every time too. Uh, pick out another number like 3.51 down there, or wh whatever number you want. Um, if you put your chain tighter, and I've had it up there 14 and 18 without paying attention, um, if I'd have had the same if I'd got this same torque at 14 inch pounds to turn that chain, um, see it changes it that much. But it wasn't, it was 10. No, it wasn't 140, it was 10. Uh, these are all numbers I put in there because I, I don't lie to myself. I don't cheat when I play solitaire and I don't cheat to myself whenever I'm trying to learn something. And that's all I'm doing, guys. I'm a hack. I can't port chainsaws for shucks, but I'm learning. And I'm not trying to be a professional. I ain't never been trying to be a professional. And I'm just sharing what I have, <clears throat> what I find out with you guys. And I'm trying to take everything into consideration I can. I built the dyno. I built the spreadsheet. And I'm just sharing it with y'all. If y'all like it, uh, hit that old subscribe button. Mash me a thumbs up. Leave me a little comment down there in the bottom. Anything you want to do, appreciate her. Thank you, guys.